Hello, beautiful homemakers. Today I'm going to read about how Lane and her husband were able to pay off their home, even though he had a fairly small income, $29,000 with six people in the home back in the 1990s. They lived in an expensive area, San Diego County, which is just as high as San Francisco. She was able to stay home with her children, and she depended completely upon her husband's income and God's provision. Her motto was, pray and pay. Like me, she did everything she could to get out of the bondage of debt and was successful. And she was very inspiring to me. And everything that she talks about in this post, which there's, I think she gives 50 things they did to help get them out of debt. I did all of them as well. So this is in her own writing. 50 ways we paid off our house with one income. One, tithe the first of our income as soon as it comes in. I agree, that is the most important thing to start with. And if you feel like you can't start at 10%, then start at 1% and work up. This is the foundation of our money. Proverbs 3, verses 9 and 10. We had a hard time with this when we first began tithing, and it was hit or miss whether we tithed or gave. We definitely had a purse with holes in it, as described in Malachi, for those who do not put God first in their finances. We then got serious and gave regularly, God sewed up the holes in our purse. Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all your tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I started with 1%, and every six months went up another percent until I was around 4% and I paid off this huge debt. And instead of using that money to put into savings or to pay off another debt, I said, how much would it be if I was paying 10%? And of course, it was the exact amount of that debt plus the payment I had already gotten used to, to making payment tithe. And so I jumped from 4% to 10% overnight, and I really haven't had financial trouble ever since. There have been tight spots, definitely, but I've never had that horrible, sinking, floundering feeling of we're not going to make it. Tithing is very important. Okay, number two, give to the poor and those that are in need every month as well as the spreading of the gospel. A generous man will be blessed, the Bible says. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Luke 7.38 He who has pity on the poor lends to the Lord, and he will pay back what he has given. Proverbs 19:17. And someone recommended to me when I first started to learn how to tithe that you only need give to Christian organizations and first of all your church, of course. That's where you're fed. So your church and then Christian organizations don't feel like you need to give to every organization under the sun. It'll only be blessed if the Lord is in it. The Bible says that those who labor, labor in vain unless the Lord is in it. Number three, pay back all our debts. We paid more on the principal every month to get the house loan paid off quicker. We also pay our taxes and have the money ready when it is required. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. Romans 13, verses 7 through 8. 
so we paid back all our debts. Many, many times at self-sacrifice. You can't imagine how joyful my husband is at having no debt against his name. I also always paid an extra $50 a month against our house note. And in my book, I go into great detail about how we got out of debt and how I was able to pay off our car payment six months early without my husband even knowing I was making extra payments. That was such a blessing. Oh, and I just found out that this letter was written in 2005. Number four, save, save, save. Every paycheck I do my best to put a little away. Even if it is only a little, it is a savings. We have a savings account, a retirement account, where a sum is taken out of my husband's salary each month, and an emergency account for emergencies. Proverbs 21.20 There is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders all that he has. And I agree. I started saving at 1%, worked up from there. Every single time my husband got a raise, you know, once a year, I captured that raise into savings. And we just lived off what we had been continually living off of. Number five, a good budget is a necessity. There are so many good Christian books on budgeting by Larry Burkett and Ron Blue, among others. I can tell right where I am in a month just by checking my budget in my purse that I keep on a 3 by 5 card. She also had a yearly budget and a bare bones budget in case her husband became ill or hurt. I was the exact same way I did those same things, but the person I followed was Mary Hunt. I think her website is called Debt Proof Living. Number six. A freedom account is something I learned from Mary Hunt years ago. I take my yearly expenses and divide that amount by 12. Then I know how much has to go into my freedom account each month for these yearly expenses when they crop up. It takes discipline, but it's so profitable once you've been trained by it. And of course, since I learned from Mary Hunt as well, that is also what I did. And like she said, it is so difficult in the beginning because every single month you have this major expense, whether it be, you know, car insurance or whatever it is, something that goes wrong, car repair, something breaks down, needs to be replaced. But by capturing my husband's raises and putting it into our freedom account, Eventually, I was able to have this freedom account that's fully funded. And so now we never have to worry about, well, will we have the money to pay the car insurance in full? Yes, we will, because I take a twelfth of that payment and put it into savings every month. Number seven, I do my best to keep our electrical and water bills as low as possible. When we were in an electrical crisis and our bill tripled overnight, We went into a very small, hip-high refrigerator with no freezer and shut down our water heater. We had to heat our water to bathe and to wash dishes. It was rough for a while, but I was able to keep us on our budget. And she admits that they had to truly sacrifice to get out of debt. And this is an example of the sacrifice they made. No hot water for a time. Now, I remember this electrical crisis around 1999 or year 2000, somewhere around there. And it was a fraud upon the people of California. It was people doing crooked business practices. And I remember receiving that bill that had tripled and was unplanned for, but I had already begun tithing. And guess what? I had an overtime check in the exact amount as that bill. God takes care of you when you rely on him. Of course, I had wanted to use that money for Christmas presents, but again, I was very frugal in my Christmas giving. I remember my budget was $400, and after Christmas, I had received 
$400 in cash and gift cards. I thought that was also amazing. That was also the year I prayed for a Christmas tree, not thinking I would get it because it was a want, not a need. And yet, I detail the story in my book. A friend left a Christmas tree on my porch. Number eight. I keep our telephone bill at $25 a month or lower. The way I've been able to do that is by using a phone card from Costco for long-distance calling. We call my mother-in-law weekly and a few other calls during the month, but mostly we write letters or email. And for those of you with high cell phone bills, that needs to stop. There are so many ways to save money on your phone bill. I think my cell phone bill is $8 a month. I mean, it's ridiculously low with Tello. Back when I was getting out of debt, I also used a prepaid phone card from T-Mobile. And for most of the time I've had a cell phone, it was 3 to $5 a month. And now, 2024, $8 a month. My husband's is a little bit higher because he talks on the phone more than I do. And we still have a landline because it's so inexpensive. Now, Lane was always asking God for wisdom on how to live and pay off her debts. I did the same. Every time before I checked out, I would look over my food cart or look over my cart wherever I was and try to put one or two items back or stopped using name brands and started using store brands. I would pray over everything in my cart and say, if there's something here that's a waste of money, help me to put it back. Also, before I went into a store, I would pray, help me, Lord, not to waste our money. Okay, number nine. I save a lot of money on food by cooking from scratch and by continuing to try new recipes in my kitchen. I make a lot of things from scratch, including some cleansers and cheese, buttermilk, yogurt, etc., I make almost all of our bread and keep stretching myself in this area to include all types of bread. Proverbs 21.20 says, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all that he has. I pray before I shop, while I shop, and then after I shop, as to what I will cook. I love shopping with the Lord. I shop from many stores and loss leaders, so I shop weekly. About eating out, that is something we don't do very often, so it's really special when we do eat out. I love the dollar stores, and I've found many great deals there. Also, Big Lots is another favorite of mine. It's really amazing how much you can save by simply staying home. And while I don't make as much from scratch as she did... Like I said, I stopped buying name brands and I started budgeting. Grocery stores used to have wonderful loss leaders. And I, on Mondays, I remember I would go from store to store just getting the loss leaders because they weren't far from me. I lived near six grocery stores, so it was very easy to do and didn't waste gas. We also just stopped eating certain things that had too high of a price point. Like I had to give up... Um, cream cheese and sour cream and we didn't buy cereals we gave up milk all kinds of little ways to keep that food budget to $100 a week I didn't have any dollar stores or big lots near me so I did not shop there but I found a discount bread store and I had favorite thrift stores and a baby consignment store that helped so much Number 10. Savings must be like a bill that you pay. It really helps to look at it that way and to get it into another count as soon as possible. 2 Corinthians 12:14 says, After all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. I believe that the easiest way to save is to have an automatic deduction. So my husband's paycheck comes into our bank, and then two days later, he always gets paid on a Wednesday, so every Friday, our savings goes into our Freedom account. 
I'm going to stop the video here and begin a new one with tip number 11.